In this con the mathematical context of such equations, we have discovered that there are mathematical structures that are indistinguishable from error correcting codes, as does occur in digital uh, information transmission. Um, I'd like to point out to people a couple of things with that uh, that I find problematic with that. One is if you accept that, then you have to also accept the, the existence of ghosts. Existence of ghosts. I've been, for the last 15 years, trying to answer the kinds of questions that my colleagues here have been raising. And what I've come to understand is that there are these incredible pictures that contain all the information of a set of equations that are related to string theory. And it's even more bizarre than that because when you then try to understand these pictures, you find out that buried in them are computer codes just like the type that you find in a browser when you go surf the web. And so I'm left with the puzzle of trying to figure out whether I live in the matrix or not. Wait, you're blowing my mind at this moment. So you're saying, are you saying your attempt to understand the fundamental operations of nature leads you to a set of equations that are indistinguishable from the equations that drive search engines and browsers on yeah, our computers? That is correct. All right, yeah. You all heard that correctly. The fundamental principles that molecules and atoms operate on is identical to error correcting codes that we already use on our operating systems for our browsers. And I'm not even gonna get into the Adipra codes in this video and how this ancient tribe is connected with the mysteries of the universe. That's a topic for another time, but I got you. So, if the universe is indeed a simulation or something akin to it, then the possibility of ghosts in the form of leftover or preserved data can possibly be true. Man, sometimes truth really is stranger than fiction. I'm really starting to see that now. So if you guys ever felt like you've actually seen a spirit, ghoul, or something paranormal, it could be the result of us living in a simulated universe. But wait though, how did we get here? At first I assumed it was because of the double slit experiment. The experiment that showed the world how particles at the quantum level can exist both as a wave and a particle. That when scientists observed the particles, they acted as expected and created a particle pattern. But when these particles are not observed, they create an interference pattern leading many people to come to the conclusion that consciousness has a play in holding everything together and that everything exists as a wave until a conscious thought drops the particles into solidity. This blew everyone's mind, including Einstein, leading him to be a critic of quantum mechanics and making statements like, God does not play dice with the universe, or I refuse to believe the moon isn't there if I'm not looking at it. I swear. This is wild, right? And not to mention how atoms as a whole work. To say that me and you, and even the cars we're driving, or the food you eat, nothing is technically solid. When you knock on the table, that's not you, man. It's the repulsion of the force of the atoms on the table, pushing away the atoms in your hand. You're not ever really touching anything with this logic. That's why in fiction, characters like The Flash, or Sonic the Hedgehog can vibrate their atoms at such high rates to match the frequency of whatever they wish to just completely walk through it. Fiction meets nonfiction, it's actually quite beautiful. So, we're not really solid and we're not sure, but it seems like the act of observing something is what brings it into solidity. Technically, if this was true, That'll mean the universe could never end. The farther we look, we could be creating more suns, more galaxies, more black holes, more things for us to look at. So damn, quick question. What would happen if every conscious thing on this earth just decided to close their eyes all at the same time? What would happen? 
Would we just fall through the planet and disappear into space? I mean, there are some plausible research that shows mathematically it could be possible that black holes are acting as observers to make the universe real and whole. Theoretical physicists at Princeton stated that the mere presence of a black hole they found is enough to turn a particle's hazy superposition, the state of being in multiple potential states, into a well-defined reality. It evokes the idea that these black hole horizons are watching. These are scientists saying this, not me, not your local shaman or your local UFO nut, mathematical scientists and physicists. It's no wonder why scientists can't catch a break. Every new discovery they make sound more like Hermeticism or Star Trek more and more. Let me know what you guys think about that down below in the comment section. The, the strongest argument for, the, for us being in a simulation, probably being in a simulation, I think is the following. Um, that that 40, called 40, 40 years ago, we had Pong, like two rectangles and a dot. That right. was what games were. Um, now, 40 years later, we have photorealistic 3D simulations with millions of people playing simultaneously, and it's getting better every year. And soon we'll have virtu you know, vir virtual reality, um, augmented reality, um, if you assume any rate of improvement at all, um, then the games will become indistinguishable from reality. Just in, no, indistinguishable. Um, e even if that rate of advancement drops by a thousand from what it is right now, um, then you just say, okay, well, we'll let's imagine it's 10,000 years in the future, uh, which is nothing in the evolutionary scale. Um, so. Um, so, so given that we're clearly on a trajectory to have games that are indistinguishable from reality, and those games could be played on any set-top box or on a PC or whatever, and there would probably be, you know, billions of such, uh, you know, computers or set-top boxes, it would seem to follow that the odds that we're in base reality is one in billions. A one in billion chance of us being in a simulated reality. Those are his estimated odds. While other prominent members in the scientific community have their own calculations. Some say one in hundreds, while others are even saying that it's a 50-50 chance that we're in a simulation. Stating that we would not have any chance of distinguishing the difference between the virtual world, simulated reality, and the real world and that any race of beings able to complete a virtual reality with this level of detail would eventually attempt to recreate life in that virtual reality, possibly as a means of studying or purely just because they can. A good proponent for this would be the holographic universe theory. How many dots and dashes or how much information can the universe hold? That's an interesting question. The usual assumption has always been that the amount of information, the number of dots and dashes, the maximum amount of information in the universe is proportional to its volume. Black holes is teaching us that that's not the right answer. In particular, the puzzles about the horizons of black holes. When you throw things into a black hole, you would expect that the amount of information that the black hole can hold is proportional to its volume. But that is not what modern black hole physics says. What it says is the amount of information is proportional to the area of the horizon. As if the black hole horizon was made out of pixels, little elementary pixels, plus minus, plus minus, zero, one, or whatever, and that the number of them is no more than the surface area. That sounds so, so counterintuitive. That sounds crazy. That the maximum amount of information that a universe can hold is proportional not to the volume of space, but to the surface area of the boundary. And that has led to a picture in which everything that takes place inside the universe can be thought of as a kind of hologram, a kind of image of something that's taking place on the boundaries of the universe in the form of a kind of holographic image. Also known as a holographic principle is a concept in theoretical physics that suggests that all the information describing a three-dimensional space can be encoded on a two-dimensional surface. 
This idea was first proposed by a physicist, Juan Maldacena, in the late 1990s and has since become a significant area of research in theoretical physics, particularly in the context of understanding the fundamental nature of the universe and the relationship between gravity and quantum mechanics. The holographic principle is closely associated with the study of black holes and is often used to explore the connection between gravity and quantum field theory. So in essence, it implies that the physics of a three-dimensional region can be fully described by a theory of living on its boundary, which has one less dimension. So reality is implied to be a projection from the horizon of our universe, mathematically. And the black hole is the best relation to it. When something falls in a black hole, the particles and atoms of whatever fell in go straight to the horizon of the black hole preserving all information, such as the atoms and molecules, on the surface of the black hole. And since energy cannot be destroyed, it transfers to the surface and increases the black hole in size, but not density, not volume. Now that's some shit. So even the mathematics shows that we're probably a projection of information from a higher dimension. Shadow of a higher dimension that is then projected down to the third dimension. Sheesh, no wonder quantum mechanics is such a difficult topic to grasp. But these reasons should be good enough to show why there are beliefs about us being in a simulated world, right? Well, how about one more crazy fact about reality? One more striking sound of proof that things are not what they seem and that we may be a simulation after all. Your DNA is equivalent to a computer program. Well, it's like a computer program. So, I mean, I think with enough, with, with, uh, with effort, that's not too crazy. You could probably stop aging, reverse it if you want. You could turn someone into a free butterfly if you want with the right DNA sequence. DNA is a storage medium. In other words, it's a hard drive. You're a walking hard drive, your body. One gram of DNA, this is science, peer reviewed science, by the way, guys. One gram of DNA, which is enough to put a little tiny drop on the tip of your finger, can store 700 terabytes of data. I'm not talking about, you know, uh, what, you know, etherical data or mystical data. I'm talking about real zeros and ones that make your phone work and make your computer work. Zeros and one bits of data, zeros and ones can be stored on DNA. DNA is highly programmable, just like a computer. And we can program a whole range of complex behaviors using DNA molecules. DNA is the hard drive, the memory in every cell of every living organism is a digital storage medium. It's a sequence of a discrete alphabet of four letters. And if we could manipulate the, some DNA, we could put a message in there. So these scientists, uh, the main one, George Church and Chris Shuri, those two actually together, are partners and scientists, they discovered this and they downloaded one of their books, one of their ebooks onto the DNA, and then they uploaded it from the DNA back to the server again. They was like, whoa, wait a minute. You can encode digital bits of information directly onto DNA and upload it back again. What does that mean? Well, we're, we're walking USB drives, literally. Now, here's what's really amazing about that. They then took that same ebook, downloaded it back to the DNA again, and they said, let's see how much we can go. They replicated the book 70 billion times in one gram of DNA. 70 billion copies of an ebook in one gram with 433 petabytes of data. That would be enough hard drives if we were using conventional hard drives to fill up this whole park. Think about that. In one tiny drop inside of your body right now, you can store 13.5 billion years of data. Ironically, that's how old the universe is. So, you are the universe. You literally have all the information stored in your body from the beginning of time until this very moment, inside of you. So when people say the universe is in you, it's not just a figure of speech. Like, the universe is really in you. Because all bits of data and particles, all, all bits of, uh, of particles are all recycled over and over. All atoms are recycled. Everything is recycled. You, everything that was here from the beginning is here right now. Nothing's been added. Nothing's been removed.
DNA data storage is a cutting edge approach to digital data storage that leverages the remarkable properties of DNA molecules to store and retrieve vast amounts of information. This concept is based on the idea that DNA, the genetic material found in all living organisms, can serve as a highly efficient and long lasting medium for storing digital data. This was helped founded by people like George Church, who recognized its potential in the early 2000s. He was an early advocate for this project. Nick Goldman and Ewan Brittany helped make it break through by demonstrating the feasibility of DNA storage in 2012. Microsoft Research, Harvard's Weiss Institute, and Twist Bioscience all had a hand in it as well. DNA data storage is pretty much a collaborative field with contributions from scientists and institutions worldwide, working to address technical challenges and make it a practical storage solution. In 2016, scientists at the University of Washington successfully stored digital data, including an operating system, a movie, and other files, in synthetic DNA molecules. They achieved a data density of 215 petabytes. That's 215 million gigabytes per gram of DNA, showing the immense potential for data storage in DNA. Now, why the hell are we able to store data, let alone so much? That's ridiculous, man. How are we compatible with zeros and ones? Why are we able to connect to the internet with devices like Neuralink? Projects that involve things like mind uploading technology. Why are there parallels between the principles governing our universe and the error correcting codes of our digital world? Why is it that it seems our observations might be what brings the universe into solidity? Why would our consciousness play a role in shaping reality itself? We've also considered the holographic universe theory, where all information about a three-dimensional space can be encoded on a two-dimensional surface. It's a concept closely tied to black holes, suggesting that our reality may be a projection from a higher dimension. What does it mean when it says that we're similar to shadows on a wall? or the pixels on the TV screen. What's going on? And let's not forget the mind-boggling idea of DNA data storage, where our own genetic material becomes a potential medium for storing vast amounts of digital data. This will be really useful in spy work and espionage. The convergence of these ideas raises questions about the nature of our existence and the possibility that we are in fact living in a simulated reality. Elon Musk and other scientists have provided their own estimates and calculations, suggesting that the odds of our reality being a simulation may not be as low as we'd expect. Some even argue that distinguishing between the real and the simulated may be impossible. Tell me this is all science fiction, and I would normally ask for the name of the show right away. But this is real life. Man, so the next time you think about the mysteries of the universe, or the next time you have a strange encounter that defies explanation, remember that truth can be stranger than fiction. Who knows what all of this means and where it will take us? This definitely qualifies as the unknown. So thank you for joining me today on this exploration and explanation on the simulation theory and why it has such a strong backing, even within the scientific community. Please let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section, guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and be safe, everyone. Welcome to the desert of the real.